All right. Uh, hey, Brian Gracely here with Mike Foley from RSA. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different in this sort of video version of the podcast. We're going to take some of the technologies we just talked about in the audio version of the podcast and kind of visualize them, right? So sure. make, it, make it simple. So uh, we talked about three or four things, right? We talked about kind of the concerns versus the benefits, right? I think we sort of highlighted those. We Folks thought, you know, cost might be a concern, which, you know, that, that's still, the, the jury's still out on that. Depends exactly. on how you do it, how big, what you're trying to do. Um, experience, like what's the right skills to have? What's the user experience that people are going to want to have? So there's ways to do this, um, but that could add to the cost. Right. right? So the benefit of this becomes, uh, you know, a little, little bit uh, uncertain. And then security becomes a concern because it should be a concern all the time, right? Yeah, and, um, and, and it's... Is this going to bring me better security, or is this going to bring me all new security challenges? Yeah, more complications, more stuff. So, right. what we sort of talked about was, you know, the benefits if you do the security right, if you build this into the architecture the right way, is uh, better governance. So yeah. I know where things are. I, I can audit better. Uh, I've got better control. Right. We, we'll, right. We'll, we'll talk to this like. Uh, smaller places where you've got to worry about security, uh, more tools around those spaces that are better integrated around virtualization, and then auditability. Like you right. said, if this device gets lost, I know what, what he touched, what files, where they were, whether data's here, whether data's back in the data center. So, right. let's, so let's just kind of walk through this real quickly. So let's, this is a really uh, simplified architecture, but it's probably a pretty common thing. So we've got um, sort of a centralized data center where we've got servers virtualized, so we've got virtual machines. This could be running, you know, VMware or Citrix or you know any of the virtualization platforms. Um, some sort of storage infrastructure, SAN, NAS, whatever it might be. Um, network. Hey, there's a cloud. <laughs> um, and these could be uh, in like the corporate environment where they're in the main location. These could be down here in a remote location. These could right. be anywhere, right? You right. could be out on the road. This could be could over be on an airplane. This could be a 3G, yeah, airplane, 3G connection, Starbucks, anywhere. Right. So let's let's sort of highlight where where what are we talking about security in this in this space? Where's the where's the security technology apply here? So there's uh, a, a number of things. So um, you could do uh, in, encryption here. Okay. At, at the at the SAN level, you okay, can so do encrypt, SAN level encryption encrypt data, sure. so that you're ensured that all of the data that's on the storage, if someone walks in and grabs a a, a disk, disk, that that's you're not having to worry too much about that. Cool. There's other ways to look at that from a security standpoint, but we'll just start right, with that one first. Point. Yep. Um, with some of the capabilities in VMware, you can now start doing things like vShield okay. running in this environment, providing isolation between the different VMs. Okay. V VShield being part of the vCloud director technology suite. It's sort of a, it's a firewall. It's a, it? Yeah. It, it, it's access list. It's a firewall. It's a bunch of it's ed, a floor ed, topping. Ed, edge yeah. technology, yeah. edge security technology. Right. right. Okay. Cool. So it's, it, it allows you to really start to control what's going on in the VMs and, and, uh, and being able to do things like data loss prevention and antivirus scanning. Okay. So being able to come right up underneath the VM okay. without having to have an agent within the VM All right. that leverages VMware tools. Yep. And so I can now scan that, that VM on a regular basis for antivirus okay. signatures. Or just like with antivirus, I can scan it for content within files that fall under different compliance rules. Okay. So, so for example, credit card through, information, oh, okay. social security information, yep, uh, Italian driver's license numbers. Gotcha. Yes, that is actually one of the ones. Okay. So there's about uh, over 80 plus DLP okay. rules that you can scan with vShield. Okay, so this is sort of the combination of RSA DLP technology embedded in the... Within vShield. vShield, cool. And, and this is aware of things like uh, as this virtual machine moves for whatever reason for high availability, for load balancing, for HA, th this is going to be aware of all, all, of all, all of the settings, firewall, antivirus, DLP, travel with the VM. Oh, cool. So it becomes automated. It fits into your overall right. policies. It's not just a stick it and hope it, you know, it, you know yeah. move. Yeah, it, it, and what's, re what's really nice is because I can now start to group VMs into, we'll say, finance and engineering, right. I can now start to apply policies to both finance policies and engineering policies. Okay. In finance, it might be okay to have an Excel spreadsheet with social security numbers in it. Right. But in engineering, it's totally verboten. 
Okay. Right. So now I get that that control, that auditability of what is going on. Okay. So we can encrypt the data. We can we can sort of provide isolation, auditing, DLP technology back here in the data center. What about yeah. out? Outside the, the sort of glass walls, the four walls. You you know you you have your your typical uh, SSL type of connections, being able to in, encrypt the traffic going all the way up to the device. You know, okay. v, v Shield, uh, sorry, uh, v, uh, VMware View already has that today. Okay. You can do very large level SSL okay. encryption so this is, this with is SSL or the PC over IP protocol and technology. So, so the S, the SSL connection is the initial login connection. Okay. So, so when I when I open up my when I open up my client, I provide my username and password. That's traveling over SSL. Okay. And then the display connection coming from the VM is now traveling over a an encrypted uh, channel. So okay. that is a 256-bit AES encrypted okay. channel. Okay. And and as far as that becomes that becomes sort of a dumb device. We don't have to worry about an input through a USD or USB necessarily or a, like you said, somebody sort of—I mean, somebody could still log in, but but this becomes maybe less of a concern point. Right. Uh, so, because I can now apply policies yep. on group levels, okay. I can say anything within engineering is not allowed to have a USB stick plugged into it. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Or I with so our so with your our, source code doesn't walk away, doesn't right. go off to. Somewhere. So as. You know, we talked about DLP here at the V-Shield level. That's really an audit capability. Okay. RSA DLP, living up in the agents um, today, um, is has the ability to apply policies so that I can say credit card information in a Word doc is not allowed to be printed. It's not allowed to go onto a USB stick. It's not allowed to go onto a USB stick unless the USB stick is encrypted. Okay. Right, and because I that, know the device types. And all that happens because even though the physical port is here, or here it's really an emulation, and it's back here. It's, where it's just a map. Lives. It's it's just a mapping to okay. the device here. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And so if I'm inside the four walls, yeah, I have all the things like you know guards at the front door, and and but if I'm out here, th does anything change? If I'm in a Starbucks, I'm in a remote location. Does this the the protectedness of this or the level of security change or is it all the same because it's just a network connection? Well, one of the, one of the things that, um, you know, if we start talking about things like bring your own device yeah. and, right, you know, bring your own device is kind of like being out in that remote all the time world, right? Yeah. But what happens when I bring my own device back into the four walls? Right. Well, maybe what I might want to do is isolate this network so that it's only connection is to VDI. Okay. Right? So I don't have a connection out to... So maybe this is a place where we create, let's say this is a wireless device, I create a, an SSID, right? An SSID, right. a wireless network that is, or bring your own device type of things. Yeah. And then the network and isolates it and then the rest the is... The only place you can get to is your VDI session. Okay. Very cool. So people right. have been doing that for a while with like guest access, but this might right. be another way to... So in, in essence, anything that's a BYOD is a guest, guest therefore access. is only allowed access to a specific application, which that application has, happens to be a VDI session. Cool. So the, these are some of the new capabilities that you can now start to apply around controlling your data. Because at the end of the day, this all boils down to is controlling my information. Right. Who has it? Where's it going? What's in it? Who saw it? Who touched who saw it? Who touched it? it? Everything else. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Mike, thanks. Uh, I hope folks like this format. I think this was helpful. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward. I think. I mean, obviously the technology is pretty robust and complicated, yep. but looking at how you go from legacy to this, you can really start to see it, it shrinks the space that you have to worry about. Right. right. You apply your your technology, your policy there. There's some flexibility here that can go anywhere, and, and it doesn't totally disrupt. I mean, it's not a radically different architecture. It's overlays on top of things. Yeah, so one of the things I, I, I kind of want to leave folks with is because it's all a, a virtual machine, yeah. I can now start to do things like I do with virtual machines. So I talked with one three-letter agency uh, last year, and they were concerned about having a virtual machine having too long of a lifetime, yeah. right? So the longer a lifetime is, the bigger the window of vulnerability for bad stuff to get on it. Yeah. I said, well, with simple scripting, as he 
exits the building, that VM gets put off into a forensics pool, and a brand new VM comes up, and the guy went, I want that. Yeah. These are the type of capabilities that virtual desktops, combined with good security tools, can really start to change how you manage and govern access to your data. Very cool. I like that. Well, uh, folks, thanks. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope you have a good time listening to the podcast. Thanks a lot.